Hi, I'm Beth Graves, and thank you for joining us on the Circus Arts Spotlight. Each week, we'll shine the spotlight on the people, programs, and events of the Circus Arts Conservatory. In addition to professional and student youth performances, we'll explore incredible outreach programs and learn how the circus arts impact so many aspects of life. For more information on today's topic, or anything circus arts related, please go to our website, circusarts.org. Now, let's get started. Today's guest is Sasa Armour. Sasa has been in the circus in many different ways for her entire life. Hi, Sasa. Hi, Ben. <laughs> Let's start with something really easy and obvious. Your name is very, very different. I've never heard of it before. Uh, you can't see it because we're talking, but it is spelled capital S A, capital S A. Can that's, you give us a rundown, please? That's correct. And that is the way my mother spelled it when she named me that. I, My whole life, I thought I would have this fantastic story about how I got my name because it's just so different. Um, but there is no story. My mother just made it up. Um, we had several dogs that she made names before that were very similar. <laughs> so there was no great story. She said, I just look like a Sasa to her. And that means nothing in Italian, which kind of helps understand her imagination. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just, yeah. It's And, and it was always very unique. I never had a little license plate for my bicycle with my name uh-huh. on it. Um, <laughs> But there was a tiger in the Philadelphia Zoo that was named after me, that was donated and named after me. And once when I was in Chicago, I was watching the Bozo Show, and I saw the name for a little four-year-old girl, and it said Sasa. And I tracked that down and come to find out that her parents had come to see me perform every year in Chicago while I was performing there. And they just loved the name, and they had a daughter, and they named her Sasa. And I thought, it was like a kindred spirit. I couldn't believe it. That's very, very so cool. (laughs) So um, you've mentioned that your family has a circus background. Yes. Do you want to tell us about your family and um, how your performance career started? Okay. So uh, on my mother's side, I'm probably, I think, six generations of the Christiani family. And the Christiani family originated, of course, in Italy. Um, and they were actually brought to this country by John Ringling. And then they branched off from there and started their own circus. And they were the first uh, family ever to take their own circus to the state of Alaska. Wow. I'm not even, yeah, it, it was a very long time ago. I'm not sure of the year, but it was the first circus that had ever, you know, that had ever been brought there from North America, and it, it made an absolute impact on them and on Alaska. Um, and so it's very simple to track my roots from my mother's side. On my father's side, he is a first-generation circus performer. His father had a Ph.D. in religion. Oh, wow. So completely <laughs> the opposite end of the spectrum. He grew up on Muscle Beach, though, in uh, Venice, California. Um, and he went into stunts, and he just kind of naturally went from kind of the filmmaking thing. He hooked up with a lot of the acrobats, et cetera, that were on Muscle Beach. And then he began his career in show business relatively late, considering – um, that I started performing when I was like nine or ten, and he was in his, you know, teens, late teens, and uh, didn't find his true niche till he was almost 28, I think, when he oh. took up flying trapeze. And so, how did he meet your mother? They met um, on my mother's family show, actually, on the Christiani Brothers show, um, and he was there with a troupe of acrobats, all mostly all from Muscle Beach, um, and they just met and. You know, that was it. Right, <laughs> that was it. Yes, yes. So you said you started performing around nine or ten. Yes. What was your first act? Uh, the very first thing I did was flying trapeze. Yeah, oh, that wow. That was the very first thing, and that was the family act. And it was really cool back then because they really capitalized on the fact that I was a little girl and I had my own piece of music. This was thank heaven for little girls, and I'd come out on a convertible car at the end of the act and go up and do my one big trick, and then you know. <laughs> And I had little ruffles. It was just, it's pretty amazing when I think back how it, you know, how it just kept going and going forward. Um, and then I did my own acts as well. I did single trapeze. I did uh, a double cr- a cradle act, which is, you know, what that is. But, you know, the male. And so we have to describe it because these are people. Well, that- uh, yeah, there's, okay, so there's a partner. It doesn't have to be a male partner, but in my case it was. 
and he would hang by his knees and I would do tricks under him uh, on his uh, on his two hands, uh, neck spins, you know, toe hangs, whatever, what have you, different, you know, just different tricks. But it's called a cradle act, which I don't know how they get that. I guess it kind of looks like that. So it's um so the the partner that is like the um the main the person that you hang from right like, like Sasha said they hang from their knees mm -hmm. and they have their ha hands and arms down and then right. so the the other performer in this case Sasha mm -hmm. would hold on to the hands or the arms whatever and the man would flip her it's almost like doing things off of a trapeze only instead of a trapeze you're doing it off of Correct. a human it's hand to hand exactly and there's no net and you you just work like 40 or 50 feet in the air and um that's it. I, and I love that act. It was great. And I liked my single act, too, because for obvious reasons, it was single and it was fun. You know? <laughs> so if you started performing around 9 or 10 um, and your family had a circus that basically traveled, did you ever go to regular school? I did, actually. Before I started performing, I was in boarding school for a number of years, um, and I would just come on the road in the summers. Um, and then later... Uh, we would stay with, like, obviously we would make good friends in public school here in Sarasota, and their families, like my parents, we would almost, we would board with them, and then we would finish the school year, and then when the summer would come, we would go back on the road. My father was very adamant about education, and I'm very grateful for that, um, and he and my mother both were very adamant about education. And my mother, even though she came from an earlier generation that wasn't as um, wrapped up in formal education, although they were uh, inherently smart, it's funny, they were just, just from being so well-traveled. But my mother's father also was very insistent about education for she and her sisters. And so she and my dad had that in common as well. And so we were always in and out of school. And it was kind of tough because we would come back into town always like a month or two after the semester had started and you know and here's the new girl Sasa and everybody <laughs> would make their jokes about my name and, you know and just when I get picked for chorus we'd have to go back on the road and I'd miss that part but but I wouldn't trade the way I grew up for anything it was an amazing an amazing education and do you have siblings I do yes I had an older brother who's no longer with us he was three years older than I he uh, professionally was a clown, a magician. He worked in our trampoline act as a comedian. He had vertigo. He's the only oh one in the God. family. He could not stand on a chair without getting sick. So this is very strange and a very aerial family. But um, uh, my younger brother actually is an attorney on the east coast of Florida. He never performed. Um, he was on shows somewhat, I guess, for the first maybe six or seven years of his life. And then... Um, we all kind of left the business, not truly left, but left the performing facet of the business at, a, at the same time. And about how old were you when you did that? Oh, I would say, let's see, I was probably 23, maybe. My father had a very serious accident in 1978. He fell 60 feet oh, wow. to the pavement. And uh, needless to say, he wasn't expected to survive, but survive he did, and very well, actually. Um, and he went on to manage circuses. Um, and then at that point, I kind of, I lost my steam for a minute after his accident because it was just a very long and painful recovery. And um, it just, it was, it was like all this performing and it was all done in like the blink of an eye. It yeah. was just done, you know, and it just, uh, it really, it, it was very impactful to me. And so we all got involved in the marketing end of show business. And then we uh, promoted circuses, ice shows, concerts, things like that. We did that for a number of years um, as a family. I mean, we, huh. yeah, we, I mean, we had our own separate offices, but each one of us had a separate office, my mom, my dad, and myself. Um, my younger brother also did it later on. Um, and so that's where I got into the marketing end of things and kind of just, I've always had my toe in, but I just haven't performed since probably 1984, I would say. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so do you have any favorite um, memories of performing or traveling with your family as part of the circus? Well, I have so many awesome memories, um, and they're categorized differently, I guess. And I have awesome memories that are good and awesome memories that are not so good, uh, my dad's accident being one of them. But it, it truly was awesome, but it was a, a horrific period. Um, I think for all the places in all the world that I performed, I would say that... Um, 
Montreal uh, at the Forum stands out as maybe the greatest show audience in the world. I've never experienced anything like it. And I don't know if it's because they got used to seeing me or got used to seeing whoever was on the show, but they were just an unbelievably receptive audience. Yeah. And so that's one of my favorite, favorite memories because that was, I think the building sat about 18,000 people and there was like 12 super trooper spotlights and you're standing right in the center of that and you just hear this roaring applause and really roaring applause. Yeah. And there's just, it's, pretty indescribable and then the awesome part is you get to go back to the dressing room put on your street clothes and nobody cares who you are you know what I mean you just so you don't have all that paparazzi business that you know other people have but you have that same rush from that momentary star thing you know so that's what I always really loved about it and it's just a really pure form of entertainment circus it always was and it, it just just all the practice and all the life and all the love and the passion that went into it it was just a way of life, you know, yeah. it, it just, it was never a job, it wasn't, a, it was just a way of life, it's huh. what you did, right. you, know? Yeah. you know, and it's just it, a great way to grow up. It and really you really was. got to see the world as part Absolutely. of it. Absolutely, all of it. I mean, there's a few places I didn't get to, I've never been to Russia, I have not been to uh, the Middle East, but I've certainly been all over uh, the Orient, I've, I've been to Hong Kong, I've been to Tokyo, I've been... Um, every absolutely everywhere in Europe. I spent a year and a half in Europe nonstop performing in yeah. every place there was to perform there. So um, that was a good education. And then certainly all over the United States. There's not a state I haven't been to. Oh. Yeah, there there is not. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know from talking to so many people that are circus performers or were circus performers that you all are a very tight-knit oh, yeah. group of people. Yeah. So do you still keep in touch um, with other performers from your performances all over the world? I do. I do. Um, all the ones that I've known all my life, I still keep in touch with. Um, it is it, it, show business, and not just circus. I think all. I think it's universal in show business communities. It's it's very cocoonish. You know, it, it, it's a cocoon-like existence in a way, even though it's very worldly because you're traveling all the time and you're seeing things that a lot of people take for granted. A lot of us would take for granted even, you know, traveling the way we did. Um, but, yes, we do keep in touch, and we're kind of frozen in the time that we remember <laughs> each other from. Like, I'll see my friends, like, once in a while, I'll go to the Show Folks Club of Sarasota, which, as you know, is a local membership-only club here for circus performers and uh, fans and other lovers of circus. And I'll see someone that I haven't seen. Oh, I haven't seen him in, like, 20 years, and we just – pick up and we start talking about that day in the dressing room when I couldn't find my hairbrush or the right costume like it's just yesterday and we all have the same you know we just laugh and go on and on and then some people I just stay current with that I'm still just in touch with every day you know um or every week at least you know that are people I've known my whole life yeah and so your mother um, who, mm-hmm. you know, was a performer, yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, she also lives here in Sarasota. She does. And does she keep in touch with a lot of her prior circus people? She does. About, I would say kind of like I, she lives with me, so obviously we're in touch. Um, <laughs> and then a lot of her family, my mom's almost 89, so she's seen a lot of her friends um, transition on before yeah. her, um, which is a little bit tough, but it's it, it's kind of, her DNA, I don't know what it is. She's extremely healthy, not good. Um, but, yeah, she's seen a lot of her best friends pass. And uh, the ones that have not, she does keep in touch with to yeah. to a degree. Um, I take her to show folks, and she'll come to circuses. She comes to Circus Sarasota, of course, and she right. likes to see it. Um, you know, she likes to see that show. Um, she, I think she keeps in touch, yeah. yeah. She goes to the monthly socials. I take her there. And, yeah, she does as much as. As you would at 89. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So how did you all wind up in Sarasota? Well, as you know, as most people know, it's a circus city. And I think that's uh, largely climate driven. Um, because the weather is so good here most of the year, it means we can practice whenever we're not performing. And for instance, we never, um, we, our whole career was basically what we call spot dating, which means that uh, there might be a show out on the road, and, and they've got a whole program that's put together for the whole year, but then when they go into the bigger cities, they bring in, like, a specialty act to kind of beef up the program and make it more. 
And so that's when we would come in. We would come in and do those 